Good day, everyone. Our topic for today is on alternative circumstances under Article 15 of the Revised Penal Code. There are three alternative circumstances. You have the relationship, intoxication, and degree of instruction and education of the offender. Alternative in the sense that sometimes it may be considered as aggravating or it could also be mitigating according to the nature and effects of the crime and the other conditions attending its commission. So if relationship is considered to be mitigating, then you all knew already that its effect is to impose the penalty of the accused in the minimum period, while if it would be aggravating, then the penalty of the accused will be imposed in its maximum period. So let's take them up one by one. The alternative circumstance of relationship shall be taken into consideration when the offended party is the spouse, ascendant, descendant, legitimate, natural, or adopted brother or sister, or relative by affinity in the same degree of the offender. So when we say relative by affinity, we are referring to relative by marriage because the other one is relative by consanguinity, that is by blood. So your relative by affinity in the same degrees would mean your father-in-law, mother-in-law, son-in-law, daughter-in-law, brother-in-law, sister-in-law. So they are your relative by affinity in the same degree of the offender. We are referring to the previous enumeration. Other relatives included could be stepfather or the stepson. Uh, step my mother and then you have their stepdaughter and then adopted parent or the adopted child so that is included in the relationship to illustrate relationship as mitigating shall be as follows as a rule relationship is mitigating in crimes against property so i hope you can still recall what are the crimes against property because we enumerated them when we had Article 4, Paragraph 2 on impossible crime. Article 332 provides no criminal but only civil liability shall result from the commission of the crime of death, swindling, or malicious mischief committed or caused mutually by spouse, ascendants, and descendants, or relatives by affinity in the same line. Brothers and sisters and brothers-in-law and sisters-in-law are also exempted from criminal liability if living together. So, uh, Article 333, we also mentioned this on absolutory causes, wherein the person would not be made criminally liable in crimes of death, swindling, malicious mischief, if the parties here, the offended party and the offender could either be spouse, ascendant, descendant, brother or sister, if living together. Okay, they committed the crime against each other. A, aim a knife and took the watch of his father and pawn the same without the consent of his father. So considering that this is a crimes against property, the relationship here of A for theft against the father is considered to be mitigating. When shall it be aggravating? As a rule, relationship is aggravating in crimes against person when the offended party is a relative of higher degree than the offender or when the offender and the offended party are relatives of the same level, like killing a brother, brother-in-law, half-brother, or adopted brother. 
Okay, so aggravating if the offended party is a relative of the higher degree than the offender or they are of the same level. That's the general rule. But if the crime against person is any of the serious physical injury, even if the offended party is a descendant, it is always aggravating. Okay? It is aggravating. Or, if the crime is less serious physical injury or slight physical injury, the ordinary rule applies. So, what ordinary rules are we referring to? We go back to the general rule here. So, that's the ordinary rule or the general rule. That if the offender is a relative of the lower degree than the offended party, then it shall be considered as aggravating. Now, what if the offender is of higher degree? Will it be mitigating because it's not aggravating? The answer is no. We only appreciate against because this is against the aggravating shall be taken against the offender if he is a relative of the higher degree than the offender so if if it is the other way around then not aggravating not mitigating at all when the crime against person is homicide or murder because earlier what was mentioned is serious physical injury aggravating if it is less serious or slight ordinary rules apply or the general rule applies now when the crime against person is homicide or murder relationship is aggravating even if the victim of the crime is a relative of lower degree in other words we can decipher that if the crime committed is homicide or murder, it would always be aggravating because of relationship between the offended party and the offender. Relationship is neither mitigating nor aggravating when relationship is an element of the crime. What do we mean by this? Like in parricide, when the spouse killed the other spouse considering that relationship there is already an element of the crime it will not be considered as mitigating nor aggravating being inherent or element of the offense or crime in crimes against chastity chastity the crimes against chastity is seduction abduction acts of lasciviousness Relationship is always aggravating. A killed his stepdaughter with the use of a knife. Relationship is aggravating. Not considered parricide as their relationship is not by blood. So since this is not parricide, we can conclude that it's either homicide or murder. So since it is homicide or murder, it says here that relationship is aggravating. So that ends relationship. Let's proceed with intoxication. When the person commits the crime under the influence of intoxicating lacquer, when shall it be mitigating? When shall it be aggravating? It is mitigating. If the offender has committed a felony in a state of intoxication, if the same is not habitual, not subsequent to the plan to commit said felony, it is mitigating. Why mitigating? Because since the accused is not palahubog, not habitual, and then it is also not subsequent to the plan to commit the felony, it was also not after he planned to commit the felony. He planned to commit a crime, but he did not intoxicate himself. But here, 
the intoxication here happened did not happen after he conceived the commission of the crime. Meaning to say, sulagma lang it just so happened that he committed a crime while under the influence of liquor. Why is it that it is mitigating if it is not habitual, not subsequent to the plan? Because the spirit there of liquor diminishes the willpower or, or the intelligence of the accused. That's why it is mitigating. On the other hand, if the same is habitual, palahubog judga, or the same was intentionally consumed by the accused in order to boost his willpower after he conceived the commission of a crime, that is aggravating. Meaning to say, purposely taken, purposely consumed by the accused, after he planned to commit a crime that is aggravating. So to, to reiterate intoxication, accused to be entitled to the mitigating circumstance of intoxication, it must be shown that at the time of the commission of the criminal act, he has taken such quantity of alcoholic drinks as to blur his reason and deprive him of a certain degree of control of himself. And that such intoxication is not habitual, not subsequent to the plan to commit a felony. Example, A was charged for less serious physical injury. It would appear that prior to boxing the victim, his friends invited him to a drinking spree which he is not used to. So meaning to say, not habitual, not subsequent to the plan to commit a felony, mitigating. Intoxication must be of such amount as to blur his reason and self-control. But if accused is a known drunkard, it is always aggravating. A habitual drunkard is one given to intoxication by excessive use of intoxicating drinks. The habit should be actual and confirmed, but it is not necessary that it be continuous or by daily occurrence. To illustrate, A has been drinking with his barcadas regularly in the store of B. When the night was getting dark, B refused to give them more bottles of intoxicating liquor, which angered A and hacked B with his bolo, causing the latter's death. Now, considering that A is a habitual drunkard, it is considered to be uh, aggravating. Now, take note, the conjunction word use is or. Okay, or. Either habitual or subsequent to the plan to commit a crime it is aggravating compare it to this case a decided to kill b okay so he planned to kill b that is planned to commit a crime a planned to commit the crime by preparing the means to carry it out when he was ready to kill a drank a glass of wine, and when already intoxicated, he looked for B and killed him. Is it aggravating or mitigating? Now, if you notice in this particular set of facts, A here is not actually a habitual drunkard. However, it was shown that he intentionally drank a glass of wine after or subsequent to his plan to commit a felony. It was intentional. Hence, it shall be considered as aggravating. Intoxication as a mitigating circumstance finds its reason in the fact that when the person is under the influence of liquor, his exercise of willpower is impaired. Intoxication as aggravating, on the other hand, when it is intentional, the reason is that the offender resorted to it in order to bolster his courage to commit a crime. It is aggravating 
when intoxication is habitual because of the constant use of intoxicating liquor lessens the individual resistance to evil thoughts and undermines the willpower making himself a potential evildoer, the willpower making himself uh, against whose activities society has the right for its own protection to impose a more severe penalty. So it is aggravating the penalty to be imposed upon the accused shall be in the maximum period. Now last alternative circumstance, degree of instruction and education of the offender. Low degree, low hadili, L-A-O, low degree, but, but low degree of instruction or an education or lack of it is generally mitigating. High degree of instruction and education is aggravating when the offender avails himself of his learning in committing the crime. Now you have there the case of people versus Mangsant. Lack of instruction cannot be taken into account where the defendant admitted that he studied in the first grade in a public elementary school. Article 15 only applied to him who really has not received any instruction. Meaning to say, lack of instruction. Zero instruction. But in People versus Limaco, accused lacks education and instruction if he did not finish even the first grade in elementary school. Okay, so more or less, the court adjusted its uh, level of on the degree of instruction. Here, uh, Mang Sant, what good ka tong tong, maski grade one. Here, there would only be lack of education and instruction if he did not even finish first grade. But in People versus Bernardo, must be proved positively and directly and cannot be based merely on inference. To illustrate, low degree or instruction of education is mitigating in all crimes, except in crimes against property such as tafa, theft, robbery, or arson. Why not uh, mitigating? Because in these particular felonies, this entails planning, meaning to say, imo gunang giplanuhan, meaning to say, naghuna huna yun si akyus. Samot na dari sa disit, uh, estafa, because disit is an element in theft on how you do about it. Robbery and arson, this entails planning on how to execute the crime. And this would be inconsistent with lack of instruction. So if these are the crimes committed by the accused, he cannot invoke LOI to mitigate his liability. But you have there the case of U.S. versus Make. Uh, lack of instruction was mitigating in theft of large cattle. Now this is theft, but then it was considered to be mitigating because it was committed by a member of an uncivilized uncivilized tribe of Igrots or in Igrot land. Now, this is actually the only jurisprudence available where LOI, lack of instruction, was considered mitigating. Would it be, uh, take note that it happened a long time ago, but it is not true at this high-tech time of ours. Because even if the person was not able to finish first grade, let, for example, why is why does he know how to use a cell phone? Remember that ad commercial nga ang, ang igurot ganito ilang gihimo nga murag talent that they uses the igurot as the the person who uses the cell phone uh what was that commercial so at at this stage 
at present time, we barely or we cannot see anyone who has LOI to be mitigating because even if a person has not uh, finished elementary grade even, he can learn many things from the outside world, outside of the classroom. Also in crimes against chastity, it is not considered to be mitigating. Why? Because under this felonies, we can decipher that um, seducing another person is not good. That is innate in our culture. We were thought that it is not good to seduce or to, to abduct the other. You were thought to... to If you wanted that particular person, you will do your best to, to win her heart. But LOI would not be mitigating just in case you committed those crimes against chastity. High degree, on the other hand, is considered to be aggravating. The example here is the lawyer who commits tafa. So... A lawyer with abuse of confidence, abuse of his education and learning, commits tafa, probably because he knows the ins and outs uh, of the law. So he he knows the how to maneuver any kinds of transaction for him to in, in the commission of staffa. So the degree of instruction there is considered to be aggravating. Same with a doctor who uses his knowledge prepared a certain kind of poison to kill his victim in such a way as to avoid detection. So this may be considered as aggravating as having taken advantage of his high degree of instruction and education. So generally, high degree of instruction is considered to be aggravating when the offender avail himself or took advantage of it in committing the crime. Okay, so those are the alternative circumstance. It could be aggravating. It could also be mitigating. So it would be taken on a case-to-case -case basis. Now, let me end this asynchronous session on this saying by Thomas Edison. Our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to success is always to try one more time. Okay, so I hope with that, you will be continued to be motivated and inspired. So thank you for your time and see you next time.